Yeah. Video again. All right, guys. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing a podcast on the channel. I'm here with the wonderful Hannah. Uh, she was a friend of mine in college, and I'm just going to let her introduce herself. And we're going to be talking about horror movies and games. Maybe we'll talk about books too. We'll just see how long this video goes for. But I'm going to pass it over to my co-host. Hey, hi. Uh, like Donnie said, I'm Hannah. Uh, we met uh, in college, and just overall, I'm a very big fan of horror both movies and i've been starting to get more into horror books <laughs> yeah i've read more horror books than i have <laughs> I've, if anything i've read a little bit of cthulhu and that's a very about oh that well i guess uh, scp i've watched a little bit of that gameplay i've just started getting into like more horror books because i've been struggling to find any horror movies that actually freak me out <laughs> so i've turned to books <laughs> I mean, that's one way to solve it, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I... You know what? I'll, I'll start off a little bit of a story about myself. I was never really into horror. Uh, and I was like, I think between the age of three or five, I was scared of a singing Christmas tree. So that should just tell you how little things could actually scare me. So that's why I have never really was into horror until probably college. That's when I got into it more. Okay. Yeah, no, I was never that big into horror when I was younger, because it was something that my parents would always be like, no, it's going to freak you out. Uh, but then I eventually, my first horror movie I watched, if you can call it that, was Freddy vs. Jason. <laughs> but then just from there, like, I started getting into, like, more and more horror, and it's just gotten worse since I went to college. <laughs> I have seen Freddy vs. Jason. That's one of the few horror movies I think I I can remember seeing. I have watched <laughs> most of Nightmare on Elm Street, too. Okay. Yeah, I think I've only seen, like, half of the first Nightmare on Elm Street. They're, they're pretty good. I... And it's just the ones I've seen because a lot of my family watched a lot of them, so I would get glimpses of it. I've if I any scary thing would show up, I would just hide. <laughs> but yeah, I, I've been always been a scaredy cat. I, I will admit to that. Yeah, so what would you say is your favorite horror movie? Oh, man, that's, that's, that's a hard one. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I'm going to have to go with, like, Nightmare on Elm Street, because that's the only one I can really remember. Okay. Yeah, no, uh, my all-time favorite is probably The Silence of the Lambs. Oh. Very, very close behind is Hereditary. <laughs> Sign of the Lambs, is that the one on the island? Or did I, I think of a different one? Uh, no, Silence of the Lambs is with Hannibal Lecter. Alright. Oh, Lord of the Flies, that's the one I'm thinking of. Oh, uh, yeah. You know what other movie that scared me? It, the original It. I would never watch it. I would even look at the cover of the movie and run away. Oh, I I have yet to see the original It, but I have seen uh, the remake, both of them. I loved both of them. Need to get around to watching the original. The artwork always creeped me out. I have seen the newest It. See, I've always been a big Tim Curry fan, so I'm hoping that I'll like the original. I'm sure it's pretty good. No, oh, probably. I mean, if we're going to talk about horror, what's the other movie? It's in that hotel. Oh, my goodness. I can't remember what it's called. Is it The Shining? The Shining. That's, that's what it is. Have you seen that one? Uh, have you seen that yeah, one? Yeah, that's another one of my favorites. I have seen that one. The, the backstory of that movie, what they put that woman through was horrible. Oh, yeah. I don't think I've heard the backstory. 
So they would torment her on set, even off uh, when the movie wasn't, even when they're not recording, to get her to be really petrified. And it, oh, like, geez. yeah, it mentally screwed her up after the movie. Uh, I I don't remember what fully happened to her. I'd have to look that up the rest of the way, but I know she suffered from it because the uh, the main character would even off when he wasn't being recorded would scare her off set and torment her and stuff uh... to try to stay in character. Mm-hmm. Have you seen the trailer or? Yeah, they have the trailer. No, they have the trailer out yet. But have you seen that they are filming a Five Nights at Freddy's movie now? Oh, are they really? It is coming out. Uh, we're gonna get stuff on it next year. They're starting to record next year on the recording the movie. Oh, that's exciting. They have people working on actual models. Um, right now of the characters that are gonna do into full on suits. Okay. I think it's really cool. I never thought Finance of Freddy would go from uh, a indie horror game to now actually having boobies being made for it. Yeah, no, but that's pretty cool though. That like it started small and now has become like such a big franchise. I'm sure Scott Coffin is like excited to see his franchise get to where it is now, based on even the community just giving so much push for everything. Oh yeah. And, like, now I'm actually playing Security Breach to start off. Like, I plan to play the other games, but I'm starting with Security Breach. And I got to the oh, Sun yeah. and Moon character, and he scared me one time. I threw my head head, 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 head off my ears, and I was like, nope, I'm done. <laughs> I was like, I cannot do this right in the moment. He sneaked up behind me. <laughs> it, it, it got me. I... The sneaking, like, when I play games, horror games, and they sneak up behind you and get you, it's like, oh my goodness. I mean, hey, that's what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to scare you. Yeah, and it's it's, it's really nice. I I like I, I like playing the horror games I've been playing. I've been playing a lot of ghost hunting games right now, which has been very interesting. Yeah, I saw you've been playing Phasmophobia a lot. I, I plan to do some things tonight. I'm recording tonight, actually, with uh, Connor. Uh, we're going to be playing... Some challenges on there, randomized settings, and we're gonna see how well that goes. Okay. So we might get it where the ghost is like a like we're like at fifty percent speed, and the ghost is like one hundred fifty percent speed, <laughs> zero grace time, and long hunt. That could possibly happen. I'm like, I know. Second that happens, Connor's gonna be like scared. It's just as much as I am when we're running, trying to run away like snails. The other horror game I've been trying out was Ghost Exile, which uh, that game has scared me multiple times because out of nowhere, a ghost event will spawn on top of me and, and you're surrounded by things. And I'm like, oh my goodness gracious. Oh, jeez. It, it even got Connor the one time. Like, he's, he wasn't expecting it. And he's like, he's I don't usually jump, but he said he got me there. Yeah, see, I don't really play a lot of horror games. I mostly just watch other people play them. Connor asked if I had like this sensation to like to torment myself playing horror games like uh, with bad settings and stuff. I'm like, you know what, Connor? We have to do that for the people who are watching. They want to yeah, see you us gotta suffer. Get the content. <laughs> they want to watch us suffer. <laughs> That's where it's funny. Mm -hmm. I, I am gonna try to play some phasmophobia by myself because I plan to do. They release the Apocalypse Challenge, so you have to set your modifier to 15x for bronze, 20x for silver, and I think it's 24x if you want the gold trophy. And if you do all the 24x, you have to have all the worst possibilities for yourself and all the best possibilities for the ghost. <laughs> and you can gather zero evidence on the ghost. So you, okay. have to, so you have to try to figure out which ghost it is, uh, get all the objectives, then you get the trophy. And I have okay. no idea how I'm going to pull this off, but I'm going to try. <laughs> well, hey, sometimes that's the best you can do. If I can at least get the bronze, I'll be happy. I mean, if I get gold, I'll be really excited. That's going to be a big dream right there. But back back on movies here. Yeah. <laughs> So what all what other movies do you like like horror wise do you watch? 
Uh, well, conveniently, I keep track of my star ratings for horror movies. <laughs> um, one thing I've realized, I'm very stingy when it comes to my five stars, because I don't have that many. <laughs> Uh, but so far, some of my favorites that I've seen, like I said, Hereditary uh, has been at the top of the list for a while now. Uh, kind of going off with The Shining, I really liked uh, the sequel to it with Dr. Sleep. Uh, and then another good one that I watched uh, recently after taking a horror films class at school was the original Candyman. I've seen so some of that movie. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't last very long. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I loved the original Candyman like a lot more than I thought I was going to. Are they making a new one? Uh, yeah, they did. I, uh, when did it come out? I th- want to say it was 2018. I don't know if that's correct. Oh, no, actually, it was 2021. It was okay. (laughs) (laughs) I definitely like the first one better. That's usually what happens with remakes. It just, they somehow just don't catch the same magic as the originals. Yeah. But then there there are times, though, like, the originals weren't that good, and someone did redo it, and it it got better. Mm Mm-hmm. But it very rarely happens. Yeah. I I definitely have to check out if we're talking about books too, like uh, the with the Shining. What is it? Um, what's his name? The guy who wrote the book for it. Oh, Stephen King. Stephen King. What was I thinking? Stein. Who's Stein? R. L. Stein. Who wrote? He wrote uh, the Goosebumps series. See, that's how much little I know about my book series. <laughs> But yeah, Stephen King probably writes well, writes basically all horror, isn't he? He's like the biggest horror writer right now, other than I guess R. L. Stein technically is too. He's kid horror. He he does the Goosebunk series. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, Stephen King has a lot of books. I have almost a whole shelf just of Stephen King. My my shelf is mainly all fantasy books. Yeah, no, I got some of those, too. It, it, like I say, it's just been really recently that I've been stocking up on different horror books. What, what is all on my bookshelf? I have Percy Jackson. So anything that's Rick Ward written so far, other than, like, the couple newer series, I have all of his books. Okay. I have J.R. Tolkien and all of his, uh, his uh, Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. I have mm-hmm. my witchcraft stuff. I have a Legend of Zelda book on philosophy. Two English books for like uh, old English writing in like England, and then I have some comic books, and then I, of course, in that comic series is Scooby Doo Apocalypse. <laughs> Which, if no one's ever read that comic series, I recommend looking up, looking it up, or reading it. It's actually pretty good. Okay. It's it's like a what if. I want to say it's really a horror. I guess like some people it might be horror, but it's like what if. Um. Everything in Scooby-Doo was actually was real. Like, if everything was, like, zombies and monsters and they were actually real things, it, it, it wasn't, like, they had to they have to have guns, have to fight back. It's really, oh, okay. inter- it's really interesting twist to everything. And Scooby-Doo has, like, this high-tech collar that lets him speak and stuff. Oh, that's cool. And it, ha- it gets you at little emojis and stuff, too. It's, it's really, <laughs> it's, like, one of the most interesting things they ever did. And Scrappy-Doo is, like, buff. I'm like, what the hell happened in this series? <laughs> I only read the first two. I do have to get the rest of the comics. I, I don't want to spoil anything, because there's some sad moments in that in that comic series. Okay. Highly recommend people to look it up. If you Even on YouTube, I think there's a guy named Comic Historian. I think he did a video on the Scooby-Doo Apocalypse series. He does a lot of comic series. But back on the horror, I mean... But that would be interesting, though. If they could do, like, a Scooby-Doo series that's more horror-based. You could possibly do that. Oh, yeah. I mean... Uh, the... I know I know one author 
uh, that I have, Christina Henry, she has done a lot of horror retellings of like Disney stories. I don't think I've read them, but I think I've heard of them. Because uh, she has one that uh, is a retelling of Alice in Wonderland, a uh, retelling of Sleepy Hollow. Uh, I know there's more, but that's what I remember. <laughs> is it like more gory and like people die? Yeah. That's pretty cool. I think I think that's interesting. I think there should be more stuff like that. Like mm-hmm. like a darker version of all the universe written stories. Like I think Scooby Doo would fit perfectly within that alignment where it can I, I know they're remaking a new series for it. It kinda has that horror vibe. It can, mm-hmm. if you watched Riverdale, it reminded me of that when I saw the few episodes of that series. I don't know I've why. I've only seen like the first two episodes, like not first two episodes, first two seasons of Riverdale. You might like the new Scooby Doo if you liked Riverdale style of like storytelling. Okay. And, uh, except Scooby Doo doesn't talk <laughs> because he's an actual dog. Yeah. I was very upset. I wanted him to talk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so used to that classic Scooby Doo, and I guess you could technically put Scooby Doo in horror if you're a kid. Because technically, for kids, it could be scary. I mean, yeah. But to me, like I, I think a real on darker telling of Scooby Doo would be pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Or just add Jack Black to it and just make him an author. <laughs> Have you seen the Goosebumps movies, like uh, with Jack Black? Yeah. I don't know if you could count that as horror, or do you count that as more like comedy horror? Probably more of like a horror comedy. <laughs> I can't believe he's going to be Bowser in the new Mario movie. Oh, I know. <laughs> I saw the trailer, and I was like, yep, he fits the role. <laughs> <laughs> they made the best calling right there. And actually, I think Chris Pratt's going to do very good with Mario, too. I don't know. I think it'll be interesting to see how it turns out. If it goes well, we might actually see them voice act the characters now moving forward. I mean, yeah, we might. Every time you boot up Mario, you're going to hear Chris Pratt's voice. <laughs> there has to be a reference to Star-Lord somewhere in there. <laughs> It'd be kind of hilarious. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to think about our horror books uh, that I've... I know there's style. Oh, well, I guess you could talk about uh, H.P. Lovecraft with technically center horror. He's psychological horror. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I, to, mm-hmm. me, I, to me, that's where he would fit. He's more psychological. With yeah, I haven't, I haven't read a lot of Lovecraft. I played. I see some gameplay. I've read some of his works. Like, I like the idea of like you know you're going crazy, you're going insane, and now you're starting to see these monsters that people don't see, but you're seeing them. Mm-hmm. Playing with that idea that you're just are are you the insane one? Or are you actually now seeing what people just for some reason don't want to believe? Yeah, I guess that's kind of why I like writing that way, which is kind of weird. Being the person that wasn't really into horror, and I write more horror direction, and I, I guess I write <laughs> fantasy. But that's kind of how some writers are. It's like they love fantasy, but they end up writing horror. Mm-hmm. But I kind of like the idea when you play with someone's head. It's like, are they going insane? Or is it they're actually opening their eyes to the truth? Oh, yeah. Like, I've always been a fan of psychological horror. I always thought about, like, wouldn't it be cool to see fantasy go in more of a horror direction? Like, I don't think I've ever really seen any fantasy books that go fully horror, other than I did just tell me about the Disney ones there. Mm-hmm. It would be cool to see, like, a mythical world where, yeah, people die. <laughs> it's, it's realistic. <laughs> it, it is horror. There are monsters that can kill you. You're not this strong character that you can rely on yourself, like most books put uh, the, the main character can't die. Well, the main character could die. Mm-hmm. They're not immortal in, in horror stories. You can lose the main character at the end of the second book, and a new main character has to take the role. Yeah. I mean, if we're also talking about other horror stuff, I mean, you got like, since we're talking about writing too, the SCP community 
has to be one of the coolest communities that I've ever seen, where they're constantly making more monsters for that universe. Mm-hmm. Like, I, ha- I haven't looked that much into SCPs, but from what I've seen, it definitely seems interesting. Like, let me pull it up here. Like, let me see how many stories, like, people have made for this. Like, I, I think it was really high. There's the foundation. Um... There's over 6,600 SCP objects. Oh, wow. That is a lot. Yeah. And it's still growing. Like, there's a toaster one. Why? Because <laughs> <laughs> why not? I mean, I I think I watched a little bit of gameplay, and I saw, like... What was it? It was the, um... The Hang King... One where uh, the guy that like writing down the uh, I don't remember the game I think it was called SCP Files but the guy that was playing it and I it was, it was about the Hang King was the first one he did and I thought it was really cool okay. like the, like the lore behind it like how he was portrayed and murdered so he now comes back if you play this play and anybody who acts out in this play end up murdering each other mm. and end up and then at the end of the day they hang each other they all get hanged oh. As, like, punishment for what they did wrong to him. So it's, like, really interesting. I thought it was, like, really cool how, like, this one little play, if you write or read it, you get cursed. Yeah. No, it definitely sounds cool. I think recently, what, we got, like, the back, uh, I go on from, like, the SPP, which, like, was built by people. And we talk about FNAF being built up from a small community. And then you got, like, now the back rooms, which is, like, um... It's like ARG horror thing that they're doing uh, on YouTube, and now it has video games being made on it already. Like people, like oh yeah, like all these small series are getting picked up by people, and it's like really cool. I think the other one I saw right now is a happy. Oh, what's it called? Happy Farm. If I remember the full name, I'll remember the full name. I can't remember the top of my head. <laughs> I'll have to go check Matt Pat. That's that's the person I gotta look at. He he played it. Oh my god, I can't, I hate when I can't remember what something's called. Happy Meat Farms. It's an ARG right now. It's kinda like horror based. Okay. On that one, like it on the outside it's supposed to be this farm with healthy foods, but it really they're experimenting on people and like animals. And making them like uh... deformed and overgrowth, and I'm pretty sure there was a game with with that name. So I'm thinking it might be linked to that universe, but I'm not 100 percent sure on that. Yeah, I don't know. And I don't know if you've seen any of these like games where you're like putting in little tapes and you're like watching this like sh- like a movie kind of like, and then you're like watching interaction and stuff, and then there's like a little horror behind the scenes. It's like a little kid show, but really behind the scenes. It's actually a murderous tape that's trying to a demon trying to kill you. It's, it's oh a, yeah, oh I forget what it's called, but I know what you're talking about. I can't, I can't remember either. It's like not, <laughs> it's not coming to my head. But there's a bunch of them doing that right now, and it's it's so cool seeing people do these twists to like games like that, movies, and even. Uh, and video tapes like that. It's pretty cool to see people always come up with new ways to do horror. That we didn't do in the past. Oh yeah, like there's now people doing games here, like t- like a little tape series based on like Ben Drown, but it's like their own game, universe fake uh, fictional game that are doing using it, and it's pretty cool. Like people doing that. Mm-hmm. But I asked the question, like, where can you go from there? Like, how far can you go before it's like you've done everything? Well, I mean, I don't know. Like, there's some pretty creative people out there. That, that's very, very true. I, I'm sure Danny Anderson is probably thinking to himself right now, like, what's next when like comes to horror? <laughs> so, there's like any other movies that you're like think are that people should watch or are really cool? 
I know one franchise that I surprisingly really liked was the Paranormal Activity franchise. I have seen the first one. I didn't think I was going to like it, like, at all. Like, I always thought that they sounded really stupid and that it was just a dumb concept. Uh, My friend finally talked me into watching them, and then we binged all of them (laughs) in one day, and I found a new love of the found footage style of horror. You know, and that style, too, can even carry into games. I think there are games based on that style where you find this footage and you're, like, playing through that found footage. Oh, probably. Because kind of like an Outlast, that's kind of how Outlast is, in an outside lens, is you're that guy recording that found footage that someone found. Like, I think I played Bigfoot the other day, and I think that was kind of scary, too. Like, Bigfoot coming up and just ripping my heart out. <laughs> he didn't even ask me on a date or anything. He just said, nope, I'm just taking your heart and going. Well, you know, it is Bigfoot. He <laughs> prefers to be alone. <laughs> he he murders me, and then my friend drowns. <laughs> he tried to swim across the lake, and he realized that you have stamina. And after you run out of stamina, you start drowning. And he slowly died. Could not have, and Bigfoot watched. Well, either drown or get ripped apart by Bigfoot. You can get two options. All right, we got revenge. We took on the Yeti and we we beat him. Put him in a cage. And then I felt bad about it because I was like, "Well, he it was his home, and we just now ransacked it." Yeah. After he murdered like three people. It happens. But I, I like the cryptid, so, like, when people make cryptid games, like, I think the one did a Loch Ness Monster one, I saw someone playing, it's, like, all foggy, you're on a little rowboat, trying to hunt the Loch Ness Monster, and you just see two little glowing eyes come out of the water looking at you and go back under the water. <laughs> I would be like, nope, I'm going back to shore, I'm out of here. <laughs> But I like that, like, people just do a lot of cool stuff like that. They're, like, coming up with new ideas. They're like, you know what? What cryptid could we make into a game that would just Mm -hmm. twist everything that people have played before? Yeah. I see someone... uh, There's a ghost hunting game called Metaphysical. I don't don't know if you've seen this one. No. If you've seen this, you drive an Impala. Same one from Supernatural, by the way. (laughs) It has the same written stuff in the back with ghost hunting equipment. You have like a shotgun with salt and a, like a blood dip knife and stuff. I'm like, this is 100% someone influenced by Supernatural. Probably. <laughs> but that's not them. All, of the, all the monsters are like based on the show. Like all the descriptions, like you can 100% say it's from the show. Like this guy was 100% into Supernatural. And I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> I could do shoot ghosts with rock salt. Yeah. I could have some revenge. Before they murder me for it. <laughs> Hopefully it's a ghost and not a, you know, a gin or something. Yeah, not something else. Because they need a different weapon and I don't have that one. Which I do plan to play Medico Physical probably tonight to try to show people what that game looks like. I think it's really cool. I mean, it sounds really cool. Uh, if I get a chance, I will post on uh, the ch- uh, on our Discord... The video I watched, and I, you just just watch some of it, you'll be like, "Yeah, it's a hundred percent supernatural reference." <laughs> you even have to burn the bodies of the ghost. Cool. And, and like, if it depending if it's a demon, I think you have to put like salt on the body, just to make sure. <laughs> ah, that's cool, though. But like, even supernatural is kind of a horror type series. Like, not not as much now. I think it was more horror when it started. Now it's like I don't feel as much horror to it yeah no the the later seasons it, well they were what they were after the darkness i watched that series to the end when god left with darkness and i didn't watch anything mm-hmm. else since same i watched up through with the darkness storyline which that was through season 11 uh, and then i watched the series finale i i don't know how to feel about 
the series at that point. I was like, well, it doesn't feel the same anymore. Yeah, no. Supernatural, for me, there's parts of it that I love, but there's other parts that I feel they were really just kind of grabbing at straws to keep the show going. Yeah, and like, I think even um, both of the main characters felt that, too, where they were just like, it just didn't feel right anymore. Mm-hmm. Because, like, I, like, I've seen glimpses at the end of all the series, it's like... Yeah, that's not really cool anymore. I I I liked the very first season, which a lot of people didn't like, but I liked because it had that like cheap horror feel to it. But yeah, it was still scary to me. I mean, yeah, the first season, the, you know, anytime I rewatch it now, I feel like the first season kind of drags, but it I think that's just because it for the first half of that season they were going with just the you know, each episode was a different monster. They hunt the monster. They kill it. Th- that's it. And it had like a mini background going on too, like building up to something. Yeah. Which is all they really needed. I felt like it lost that later on. Like they lost that ability to build up a big bad for a different season. Mm-hmm. And then they just lost all of it. After like two or three seasons, you kind of killed that big bad. Now there's nothing left. Yeah. Well, we gotta come up with something new. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what they're doing now. I think they're gonna work on another move. Oh, wait, they're on the boys, I think, it's what they're doing now together. Uh, I know Jensen's on the boys, and Jared uh, does Walker. I, I, I know Jensen was trying to convince him to come over to the boys to play a character. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if that happened or not. <laughs> That'd be cool, though. They, they, I think they're just they're really good together. They have that good chemistry with each other. Mm-hmm. Already built, so, like, it's good for people to be like, no, you know, put these two in a movie together. They're gonna work. <laughs> yeah, and then, I know, I think October, the prequel series for Supernatural starts. What is that? Oh, uh, it pretty much follows John and Mary and, like, how they met and got started hunting and whatever. Oh, that's interesting. Because wasn't Mary a hunter? John wasn't even a hunter until after her death. I thought that's yeah, how... Yeah, that, that's how it was in Supernatural. I don't know if that's the story they're sticking to for the prequel, but... I mean, I guess they could maybe change the timeline? I, I mean, it... maybe. I don't know. It's supernatural. I, they, I feel like they have figured out so many different ways around potential roadblocks. Oh, yes. We changed the timeline here. So there's split timeline. <laughs> but it, 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 no matter what, it would be the same when we get to super. <laughs> <laughs> that is the, probably the biggest horror of all time is complicated timelines. Yeah. Look at the Legend of Zelda. That timeline is so complicated. I don't even think that <laughs> timeline has to make sense anymore. What's a, what's another movie series that just has such a complicated timeline that no one understands it anymore? Marvel. That's just probably. True. Well, they kind of have in a timeline. If you have Disney Plus, they put it in a timeline for you. <laughs> I have watched most of the Marvel movies. They have a horror one they're working on. I think it's called Werewolf or something. It's supposed to be their horror okay. MCU uh, stuff, but like I don't know if I want to watch it or not because I know nothing about those characters. Yeah, I'm already lost when it comes to Marvel. Like I, I watched the newest Thor and I was like, this is way different than when it started. In yeah, no, it's it's definitely different. <laughs> I mean, they're still good movies, but I know some of the stuff is just not as good as it was when they did the whole arc with the Affinity Saga. Mm-hmm. I, I think they just messed up a lot, and they should have gave Kang more time like they did Thanos. They're trying to just rush through it. Yeah. They should just do another 10 years of just setting up who Kang the Conqueror <laughs> is. This guy is like... Probably more powerful than Moe's villain. No, he's more powerful than Thanos, because he literally could go between timelines, and there's, like, hundreds of him that are powerful. (laughs) 
what other horror stuff can we talk? Oh, we know what creepy pastas are also something scary too. Oh yeah, that I got into I think creepy pasta in high school back when uh the Quizilla site was still a thing. I don't remember many creepy pastas. I remember Ben Ground. That's the one that always comes to my mind when I think of creepy pastas. Yeah, isn't that the one with the Legend of Zelda game with yep. Majora's Mask? Yes. One of the creepy ones I, I remember. I, I know there's other ones, but like I can't think of their names. And like, I think of Slenderman, but Slenderman wasn't really a creepy pasta. He was more of his own little mini Andy franchise who now has like Easter eggs everywhere in horror games. Yeah. He even shows up in Phasmo too. If he's out playing one of the outdoor maps, he's actually out there standing sometimes. Watching oh, you. really? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. If I ever get a chance to catch it on camera, I will, but like it's it's supposed to be a rare event. Okay. I know on the Woodland map, the newest map, he shows up in one spot, but on the other map, the bigger Camp Maplewood, uh, Maplewood mm-hmm. on that map, he could spawn like seven to ten different spots. And you oh, have, wow. if you don't remember them, you might miss him. But it just gives that little creepiness that now oh, there's something in the woods watching you while you're hunting a ghost. Mm-hmm. That's the cool about horror. Like I love how they reference each other too. When you play a horror game, sometimes they'll reference or you'll see an Easter egg to another horror game character. You might see Jason's mask hanging on a wall somewhere. Yeah. Which in the maple area, you can find his mask in the water in the lake. Which is a, <laughs> which is, which is an awesome reference to the fact that he comes out of the lake. So it's like Oh yeah. <laughs> they so the people of Phasmo definitely did their research and be like, yeah, this is, or watch those movies, and they're like, yeah, we're going to put a reference right here that we know people are going to catch. Yeah, but I think that makes it fun. Because then it, you're playing, and it's like, oh, hey, I know what that's from. Yeah, and I, I have a special video coming out for Phasmo, because they just did a Halloween update with the okay. lobby. Because we got the new lobby. They did an update with the Halloween lobby, which is actually going to have Halloween things going on. I have a video coming out with that. I'll do some more stuff on it, too. I didn't do the music, spooky, uh, the spooky music yet, but, like, there's some creepy stuff going on in the game. <laughs> Maybe tonight me and Connor will go to some of the interesting lore of Phasmophobia, too, because there's some... On the new Asylum map, there's some really cool lore going on. Okay. Because, uh, I get, just to explain a little bit of the lore, like, on the old asylum map, which you can't go to now, there was a lady named Lisa, and there's a secret room you could find where she wrote like she wanted to get out of the asylum that she was in, and she wanted to go mm-hmm. to Sunny Meadows, which is the new asylum they just did. Okay. So we follow on that story, and we find out what happened to her in Sunny Meadows. Oh, okay. So if you have a UV light, you can find a, a room that you hold people in if they're crazy, like one of those padded rooms. Mm-hmm. If you go in the room that's filled with blood, and you look around the walls, there are little notches for how long she's been in there. I think there's over like a thousand notches. Oh and, wow! No, even more than that. I think they said that there's that if they did it by years, she would have been in there for over forty years. Wow! So a lot of people think it's days because they're like that's a little long for someone to be in a padded room. Mm-hmm. But you can find her dead body. She didn't make it, sadly enough. Her dead body is in one in the morgue, on the table, on one of the side things you push in to close. And mm-hmm. I was like, that's, that's so sad that she wanted out of the old asylum to find a place better, and the place she went to was not better. Yeah. So me and Connor definitely have to explore more. There's some really creepy rooms. In the one wing, it's supposed to have like screaming. You can hear screaming and torture sounds. Mm-hmm. They went all out on this new map, and it's just creepy obviance everywhere. <laughs> like, there's, like, blood and gore in one room. It's, like, body parts everywhere. Like, someone exploded. Oh, wow. I was like, yeah, this is, like, if you don't have a strong stomach, you're just not going to make it through that room. <laughs> But I, I like how, like, in Phasma they did that, and I like how other games do that stuff, too. It's like, no, these insane asylums weren't good places, and that's kind of true to history. They weren't good places. Yeah, no, that's very true to history. <laughs> they did torture people, and they did some horrible things. Mm-hmm. 
And that's why they're haunted, because what people did to them. Yeah. Now, I don't know what you did to someone to make them explode. That, that is a curiosity. <laughs> Was there anything else you think uh, you want to talk about horror-wise? Oh, I don't know. I'm trying to think of anything else. I mean, let's see. We talked about Slender Slenderman. Like, was one of the creepiest OGs of his day. Yeah. Now he's been beaten to death. His his movie sucked. <laughs> yeah, no, the Slenderman movie was not good, <laughs> like at all. Please, Bloomberg, make sure the FNAF movie is good. Please. Hopefully. <laughs> I, I, there's so many good series and games to play. I, I definitely want to try the, uh, what's it called? The Mortary Assistant. Oh, yeah. I heard that's really good and creepy. Mm -hmm. But I, I like that. There's a lot of creepy stuff, creepy movies, creepy games, horror. Oh, I like yeah. That. I know the new, uh, Halloween movie comes out, I think, next weekend. I wonder how well... I, you know what? We'll have to catch up with each other again on another episode about how well it went. Yeah, I need to get caught up just in Halloween in general. I have not seen any of the Halloween movies. I've seen the one Rob Zombie did, parts of other ones. So what do you think of Rob Zombie doing uh, Halloween? I don't know if you've seen his version. No, I haven't. Because he's been doing a, a bunch of horror movies. He did the must, or the, I think it's called the Musters or the Monsters, whatever it's called for Universal. Oh, the Monsters. Yeah, he did a movie like that for Universal, a remake. So I'm curious, like how he is as a director. Since mm -hmm. he make, he makes music, so I'm curious, like, does he take his music taste into it, the movies, or is it like he tries to keep it separated? Oh, I hope he takes his music taste into the movies. I love his music. <laughs> Because I've seen his Halloween one, and some of his music was in there, so... But a lot of people didn't like the movie. They said they didn't like his vision of it. I mean, that's understandable. Like, you know, you start messing with older horror movies that people have loved for years, and they're going to have strong opinions. <laughs> well, his version was, like, supposed to be, like, the origin story. He went towards, like, the origin of how it all happened, and, like, what happened a little, like, years later. Mm-hmm. But I think that's interesting. How, we, do the scary movies count as horror movies, or are they kind of just comedy of scary movies, <laughs> or both? I mean, I guess both. They, they kind of fall into that horror comedy. I have watched almost all of those. <laughs> that is one series I think is hilarious. Oh yeah. Especially, uh, what is it? I think it was the second one where they roll the guy into a blunt and they just lit his hair on fire. I think so. He was he was getting high on himself. <laughs> I, I like those tropes where you just like you're like you listen to him and you're like, oh, he's getting high on himself because you know that's something that people sometimes do. They get they get full of themselves. Mm -hmm. But if we're gonna talk about that, you know, there's an interesting um, role playing game called uh, what's it called? You've played Dread with me. Mm -hmm. which I thought Dread was pretty cool, but I definitely want to do a retake of it. But there's... So, to explain to you guys watching, Dread is like a... Instead of dice, you use a Jenga tower. And you pull to do things to try to survive certain events. If you fail, you die. That's kind of the whole point. Which we got to try that, and then I'm... Hannah, you want to tell them how that went? Like I, I thought it was okay. I thought I could do a lot better with it. Yeah, for a first time of, I think, any of us actually sitting and playing it, it went okay. Uh, learned I'm not great at Jenga. I am terrible at Jenga. <laughs> I try to play it on Phasmophobia and I fail. I throw it on the stack and the stack falls over. Let me see here. I, I know there's some more uh, role-playing games. Let's be under here. Uh, I think it's called Dead of Night. This might be what it's called. Is it Dead of Night? Yes, yeah, so there's a cool one I definitely want to do. I might do this for the channel for October, but it's called Dead of Night, and you do... 
it's basically supposed to be based on old school horror movie tropes. Okay. So think of like the dumb jock and the preppy cheerleader, the stoner. And if you play your roles like to those tropes, you get survival points. You can survive longer. And you can have a bad guy, and the bad guy plays to his trope, too. So it's like, you might have this killer at a camp, like Jason, and he's stalking you. And you hear that creepy music where he's trying to come up to you and try to kill you. And it's like, I like that idea. And you can pick these. And all the settings, they give you so many settings you can do based on all different styles of horror. If you want to do psychological, okay. if you want to do, like, the killer, aliens. Uh, there's a bunch of other settings. The haunted house, if you want to do a haunted house. And I thought yeah, it, was, it sounds fun. And I like how they do the stats in this game too. Uh, instead of like rolling dice or anything, your stats are split between like one style and another. So, like for example, are you persuasive or dissuasive? So, do you persuade people or do you convince them not to do something or do you convince them to do something? So you got you got to pick where you're putting your points. Are you good at attacking or are you good at defending? I, I kind of like know. that idea. Say, for example, let's say you put six points in assault, you can only have four points to protect. So you have to try to figure out a way to balance your points, and if you play to your tropes again, you might be that jock who's really good at attacking, but he can't protect anybody. <laughs> okay. But that's kind of how that game kind of style works. And I, I have another horror one in here, too, I've never looked into. It's supposed to do with, like, creepy dolls and stuff. I think... Annalise Journal is what it's called, but I have never read or done anything with it. I don't know anything about this one, but it's another horror one I picked up. I haven't read into it or studied any of it, but I think Dread of Night would be the one I want to try out one of these times. Yeah, sounds fun. Maybe I'll get a group together. We'll do it on the channel, just like play a round of horror. Yeah. But you know what? I'll send you the book to your email. Okay. It should let you look through it, but it's actually really, I, I think it's really cool. I mean, yeah, it sounds really cool. I don't think I got anything else. I think I'm running out here. <laughs> uh, let's see here. I don't think I got anything else on my notes. Yeah, I, I didn't really make notes. I just kind of <laughs> have been winging it. <laughs> That's kind of what I'm doing. Like, I have a little check notes in my head. I'm like, oh, okay, did we cover this? Yes. Did we cover this? Yeah. So what do you think, Hannah, of doing more stuff like this? Just sitting and talking about stuff. I mean, yeah. Like, I think it could work. And I, I think people would enjoy this. Because some people just don't want to watch something. But they just want to listen and talk. And uh, people talking when they're doing stuff. Yeah. And I'll try to push this episode out as soon as possible. I, I I'll try to get it out before Sunday, if I can. If anything, it might come out Monday. Just depends on my schedule. Because I have a FNAF video i got to push out. And I have a couple other videos I was too lazy to post yet. So <laughs> I, I have so many videos to next week already. So I don't, like, I don't really feel like uploading at the moment. Okay, that's fair. But... Talk about no game we didn't talk about amnesia. I am I I'm gonna go back and try to finish the rest of that game. I got to oh, the, yeah. the second half. I think I'm in the second half now. I'm out of the main section of rooms. I'm in the next section with the fountain. Okay. I, I gotta find that uh, mechanism to unlock the elevator. I don't know if you know where that 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 is in the game. I don't. It is. It's been a long time since I've played amnesia. I had the water monster chase me, and like my audio wasn't working, so they only hear me <laughs> screaming at nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but the monster was chasing me down in the water, and I was like, "Stop slapping me!" I had to run. I, I, I those games get me so scared. I'm trying to run away from a water monster. <laughs> I wish I could find things that actually scared me again. <laughs> but I think I've just gotten to a point I'm so numb of, like, anything horror. And that happens if you watch so much horror. If you yeah. do, you just lose 
all of that ability, and that's one thing I'm afraid of. If I keep playing too much horror games, I eventually will lose that scare factor. Because a lot of the big YouTubers all said that. It's like they had to start faking reactions because they lost the scare factor. They weren't scared by it anymore, but they didn't, yeah. want, to upset, they didn't want to upset their fans. It's like, it happens. Sometimes you just have to tell your fans the truth. I'm not scared of it anymore. Yeah. I gotta find something new. <laughs> Me, simple scares get me, but but like in Phasma right now, I'm not as scared as I used to be. Unless, well, I'm, by, unless I'm by myself, then I'm terrified. <laughs> if Connor's there, I know if I'm dying, I'm not dying alone. <laughs> <laughs> then I can throw shoes at him. Or a bell. Some way to get his attention. <laughs> if you have watched any, I don't know if you've watched any of our Phasmophobia, but sometimes we'll have like throw stuff at the computer to kind of communicate with each other. <laughs> He'll, like, ask me, did you get this piece of evidence? And I'm, like, throwing it to the ground. I'm like, no. And I'm throwing stuff at the UV light. I'm like, check UV. He's like, what are you telling me? Are you telling me no? I'm like, no, I'm not I'm not doing anything to, to, even required to your question. Because <laughs> he can't hear me because I'm dead, so. Yeah. I have died in, like, every horror game so far I've played. <laughs> Except for Amnesia. I have not died in Amnesia. Oh, you know, that's good. I died I'm not really into playing horror games. I'm not really into a lot of video games, to be fair, but... I, I think you like Fazbo ghost hunting with people. Like, it's a good, fun game to play with people. I mean, yeah. I, play, I like from what I've seen of other people playing it. I've been, I played that one. Me and Connor had played Ghost Exiled. We played Ghost Watchers, which I just came out today. I think it was later yesterday came out. We played some Devour. Devourer's not ghost hunting, though. We're just trying to stop our friend for, who summoned Azazel from dying and failing <laughs> horribly at the asylum because we can't beat the asylum. It's driving me insane. <laughs> I tried hiding in an episode, and cause I tested at the end. I was like, okay, everyone's dead. If I hide, can't she find me? She found me. I'm like, nope, you can't hide either. That doesn't work. <laughs> and we had, like, one rat to go. <laughs> Every time we're, like, one or two short, and we just die. Yeah. So we're we're yeah. gonna be we do have plans to go do the end and skip over that map and we'll kind of come back later because yeah. of, cause there's some cool stuff they're doing for October and we want to get to the other maps and try them out. Mm-hmm. But I we are gonna try metaphysical. I definitely want to get a video of that out for people to check out. Yeah. I'm gonna try to get Ghost Exile uh, Exorcism because it's another one I thought was pretty cool and give that a try. There's, okay. so many, there's so many ghost hunting games. I just want to try different ones <laughs> and see what people like. But yeah. Phasma is going to be always my main one to go to. Cause me and Connor both talked about it. Like, Phasma is the one I want to see. So like, especially when it comes to challenges. People like our challenge episodes. So I'm uh-huh. going to do, do more of those. Because t- tonight we are planning to do the randomized challenge where we're just going to randomize the rules and just go with it. Whatever we get, we're stuck with. <laughs> Until we get into that match. And then we can do it again. So I'm yeah. excited to do some of that tonight because I'm gonna push our luck. <laughs> Either he's no, gonna. The, only... <laughs> the yeah. only horror games I've played, like at least the full way through, is Until Dawn and The Quarry. I haven't tried those ones. They're great. <laughs> <laughs> like it, they're not. It's not a lot of action to them. Like they're pretty much just kind of like a choose your own adventure type of game. But not, they're, they're a lot of fun. I'll have to check them out. I haven't seen much on them. I, I've heard people play them, but I've never actually watched anybody playing them. I know, they're fun. Uh, the Quarry, they're, it's the same uh, company that makes both of them. The Quarry is definitely a lot bigger. But they're just as good. And I'm sure they'll make more, too, just to Try different things. Oh, I hope so. I definitely want to play some Cthulian inspired games. I want games that I want to try some more. Uh, try some psychological horror games where it's like you're just walking and then you start seeing things. Mhm. I thought that would be kind of cool to try out some too. Yeah. But I have so many games right now I have to go through, so I'm gonna to try to finish some stuff before I even try anything new. That's fair. So I want to finish Amnesia and FNAF, 
and then I'll go from there where I want to go. Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to do Machine for Pigs and Rebirth. I know Dark Descent was the favorite by everybody. The other two weren't well as well received, so it's going to depend if I get to them or not. I mean, yeah, that's fair. Hopefully there's something new horror will come out wise and I'll try that. I mean, yeah. I know one game that just came out that I guess is horror, but not really. It's the Cult of the Lamb. Oh, the one where you're a lamb and you, you <laughs> save Then people. you build a cult, yeah. <laughs> and you can sacrifice them, or you can not sacrifice them. Your choice. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'll have to like look that uh, that up and see... Yeah. Uh, See if uh what all you can do in that game. I wonder if you can name people, that'd be pretty cool. I think you can name them. I don't know. I haven't tried. Cause you're a lamb, aren't you? You're like the lamb trying to sacrifice yeah. people. But you're a lamb and you start a cult. And then I am going to do some more Traveler's Rest because I know I have, people have asked me to do more of that game. And I like I tell people who watched it, it's it's it reminds me of Stardew Valley. <laughs> it really does because instead of being a farm, a farmer, you're an innkeeper. Cool. But you cook food, you grow your own crops, you make your own furniture, it, it you cut down trees, you mine rocks. It's like it's <laughs> definitely Stardew Valley vibes to it. That's fair. But I thought it was a really cool game, because they have an update where you get a parrot that talks for you. Oh, that's cool. So they come in the inn, the parrot's like, welcome to the inn, or like, <laughs> how's your food? I thought that's kind of cool. Like I like how developers are always constantly creating some new ideas that throws the, mm -hmm. something new to the game. That's why I can't wait for Phasmos to do with upgrade coming after, because we just got the Apocalypse update. There's an update coming soon, too, which we're going to be able to update our equipment. Oh, that's cool. So the UV light can get bigger, which is in my video, uh, which I'll have to post some point, where the UV can now be from the small light, will be like a normal size fast flashlight now, and you get new ghost box, new equipment you can use. So I think it's really cool that they're constantly doing it with any game. Like, all these ghost hunting games I'm playing are all in development, and mm -hmm. these new updates they do are always cool and interesting. New mechanics. Each one feels different too. It's like sometimes you kill the ghost. In Phasma, you just want to figure out what the ghost is. Some ghosts, you have to exile the ghost, or you're going to try to kill the ghost, like a metaphysical, mm -hmm. supernatural style. <laughs> I, I was, I'm so hoping they put a reference to Dean and uh, Sam Winchester somewhere in there. Because they mentioned they do have something about Winchesters in there. So I hope they had put like Sam and Dean Winchester somewhere. Just a reference I mean, yeah, to some that'd be cool. hunting monsters. Just a little like reference, and that'd be pretty. Yeah, that would be like awesome. And I'm sure people would play it more too, because they'd be like, "Oh, I want to be like them." <laughs> but I think uh, I don't think I have anything else left. We're about to hit an hour already. <laughs> That's the best part about talking. Like you could get to like an hour of just talking. Mm hmm. So, would you like to do uh, another episode like this sometime? I mean, yeah, we could try. Maybe, maybe we'll hit. We'll maybe we'll try something else. Maybe we'll pick like some favorite ghost stories or something we can look up or talk about fantasy. There's so much we can do in October too, because it's also the Halloween month. It's the creepy month. Maybe even talk about witchcraft and stuff, or talk about just anything in general. And if you have anybody in mind you'd like to be a guest on the this podcast, that'd be cool too to have them come along and talk too. Yeah. Like, if you have an idea for something, and you're like, oh, this person knows this stuff, we should ask them to come on. I mean, yeah. yeah. And, like, I have, like, I know I have a lot of, like, horror movie stuff, but it's kind of hard, because you haven't seen a lot. <laughs> I have a feeling we'll be talking about a lot of horror movies <laughs> in the next few episodes. I'm that, pretty sure you're going to want to talk about I something. That's all I watch. <laughs> and that's a good that thing. Yeah, no, that's, like, all I watch, especially uh, in October, because Dakota and I usually just binge <laughs> horror movies throughout the month. I'm sure maybe Dakota would want to come on and talk about horror stuff. I mean, maybe. And you're, you're a co-host, so you're allowed to invite people to come on. And I'll see if I can find some people to do an episode with, and we'll just... Maybe we'll like question them badly and see how well we could push them. 
<laughs> so, any, any parting words for this episode? I don't know. It was fun. Definitely. And don't worry, Hannah. If the channel does take off, you will be paid for... <laughs> I'm I'm the most like fairest person ever. You will get paid for your efforts towards the channel. Like I am 100 percent that way. So you don't have to worry about any of that. <laughs> and if you want to do a gameplay and you want to use the channel, the poster stuff, you're completely welcome. You are a co-host now, so I'm allowing you access to the channel if you want access to it. Yay! And maybe eventually, hopefully, we'll find like a third co-host to balance out everything. I think three people is the way to go. Cause I've noticed a lot of co-hosts use like three or two, use two, but I think I've seen people with three, and I feel like three is like there's more to talk about because you have different people with different opinions. Yeah. You and me are like trying to bounce off each other. We're like, oh, we're running out of things here. Yeah. <laughs> but a third person might throw something in there, like, oh no, I've seen this. You guys got to check this out. And then to our viewers, you know, if you like this, make sure you like and subscribe. And if you want to see more of Hannah, you know, def <laughs> double like the, the video. Like, make a second account and like it uh, twice. <laughs> but we're going to do some more of this. I, I definitely want to do more of this stuff on the channel. Because I'm not uh -huh. sure how the direction the channel is going to 100% go, but I'm going to try different things. And like I said, if you want to post, like, you playing the quarry or something, and you want to post videos of that, you are completely welcome to. Okay, cool. Yep, just let me know, and I will send you the email and password for the channel. Yeah, I don't do a lot of gameplay, but maybe it'll convince me to <laughs> play more games. <laughs> and if you're looking for any recording software, I recommend you use OBS. I think it's the best software. That's the one I'm using right now. Uh, yeah, I... Justin has OBS that he uses to do his videos for class. <laughs> and I'm sure Justin could teach you how to use it, too. Probably. I definitely go. We definitely got to bring Justin on one of these time and talk about <laughs> talk about something. I don't know what, but I'm sure he'll have some ideas. I mean, in terms of like horror and stuff, I know he used to like do a lot of ghost hunting and shit. That'd be like kinda back cool. in the day. See how much accurate phasmophobia is with actual ghost hunting. <laughs> uh, and I'll be pretty cool. Like I can ask him. Like this is how it works in the game. This is how it works in real life. Do you need yeah. do you need three pieces of evidence to figure out what ghost it is? <laughs> <laughs> but I think that stuff would be cool, and I definitely want to grow the channel and make sure uh, you know if you got people who might be interested in listening to this, make sure you share it with them. I'm sure they'll like to listen. Mm -hmm. that, that's the other reason I did this because I know, again, like I said before, like people want to listen to self, and I think this gives them another avenue to see what the channel is like, and I. And I, I definitely want a haven for people to go to, to, like for people like you and me who like just want to talk sometimes. Yeah. Eventually, I will extend the uh, Discord. Will get bigger because eventually we <laughs> might have people who are fans of this of the series who might or our channel might want to join our Discord. They might not have as high of a rank though as we do. Like I'm still working on the ranks of their Discord. Mm -hmm. Even the names are all over the place. <laughs> I think you're like a nerd lord. I think that's what I called you guys. Cool. I think there's lord, knights, and nobles. Okay. And I'm just the arbiter. I'm just like the judge. That's all I do. <laughs> I let people do what they want. I don't judge anybody as it is. But thank you, Hannah, for being here. You know, I really appreciate it. Yeah. And uh, maybe we'll shoot for next week and do another episode. I mean, yeah, we can try. I'll let you pick the topic. You send it to me, and then we'll we'll go off it. We'll, oh, <laughs> if I have to, I will research something for that topic. I don't know. There's so, there's too many possible topics. It could just be generic. You get to host the next one. Like I host this one, you get to be the host of the next one. I don't know. See, my first thought is cryptids. That way I can talk about the squonk. That sounds good. We can do that. Next week we'll do cryptids. Yeah. Sounds good to me. That'll be that'll be kind of fun. I think we'll have a good time talking about cryptids. There's so many good cryptids. Mm-hmm. And maybe I'll leave like some games for people to try out with those cryptids in it. 
I mean, yeah, that'd be cool. Because yeah, there's one hunting Bigfoot. I think you hunt Bigfoot right now. There's a Skinwalker game. And there's a Loch Ness Monster game right now that I've seen. I mean, yeah, that's cool. I guess we're going to wrap it up here then. Sounds good. <laughs> well, guys, uh, thank you for watching. Um, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, become a member of the channel today. And Hannah, any parting words for our viewers? Just like and subscribe if you want to see more <laughs> or hear more, I guess. That's a better put. I think I, I really <laughs> messed up right there. Well, guys, we'll see you next time.